Do you know who you are? The real you. Are you proud of that person? I know I've sometimes not been so proud of myself. Sometimes I wore masks. Sometimes I still do. See, masks, they allowed me to be liked by my friends, respected by colleagues, even accepted by family. And here's the thing, masks worked. But every time I wore that mask, I betrayed myself. When people told me that they loved me, I didn't believe them. They loved that mask. They never knew the real me. This made me feel lonely. Even when I was surrounded by my closest friends and family, Then, one day, about three years ago, I felt a lump on the back of my throat. It was a tumor. My father died of cancer at 37. I was sure I'd meet the same fate at 33. Luckily, mine was benign. I got a second chance, and I knew it was time for me to change and let people know who the real me was. And I knew it'd be a little bit of a process before I was able to transform into this new, more authentic version of myself. But no great progress has ever been attained without that process, right? Exactly. To give you all a little bit of context, I was raised in a place called Fluvanna County, Virginia. Now, this is not a city or a town. This is a small, conservative county. Good old Fluvanna. Now, Fluvanna was so country, our high school didn't even have a mascot. Back in the 80s, we had a pretty decent football team, and the uh, local newspaper nicknamed us the Flying Flucos because we ran so fast, it was almost as if we were flying. The whole Fluco thing, they just combined Fluvanna and county. Simple as that. Some country shit. <laughs> uh. I first got into sports to... Uh, escape a terribly abusive household. My dad was both verbally and physically abusive towards me, my older sister, and my mother. I didn't really understand where his pain came from until I was much older. The way I found out, it made things all the worse. It was early Saturday morning, November 1997. That morning, he was in a bad mood. Slammed her head into the wall, leaving a decent-sized hole in it. I was living in the basement at the time and up early watching cartoons. That's when I heard screaming upstairs, and then a loud... <laughs> the basement door swung open. There was heavy footsteps coming down towards me. Your mother's a whore. I'm not your father. That's it. How I found out. He hopped in his car and drove off. My mother came down later that afternoon and apologized to me for having to find out the way that I did. Son? Would you like to know who your biological father is? It's been all these years, and he's never reached out to me and tried to find out who I am. <laughs> it's all right. I'm cool. Except it wasn't I. Right. That damn sure wasn't cool. You see, the man that I had come to know as dad, he taught me how to fix a car how to paint a house, how to landscape. But he also taught me that all white people are evil. Gays, they're disgusting, sinful, going to hell, no chance of redemption. And I internalized those beliefs. 
even with the outside world becoming more and more liberal, or that's at least what MTV was telling me. <laughs> the people that I surrounded myself with in Fluvanna, they really stuck to those same hateful opinions. And I was at peace with it. I went to college just outside of Chicago on a full paid football scholarship. I'd become a pretty good athlete. I could have gone to whatever school I wanted to, including UVA, which was right down the street. There's no way I was going to a local school. Even though I had my real feelings behind that mask, it was time for me to put on a new one in a new city. You see, the plan was simple. Go out to Chicago, become pretty good at football, and then that, NFL. Simple as that. You couldn't tell me nothing. I packed up everything I owned in my Jeep and took it out to the Midwest and left nothing behind. See, one of the things I packed up and took with me was my small town love for dirt weed. <laughs> you see, back in um, Fluvanna, sure, we drank. We had our beer, whiskey, and you best believe moonshine. But ever since the first time that I sparked up with one of my friends, I knew there was something different about cannabis. One thing though, every time I sparked up and got high, I'd lose the mask. Cannabis being uh, communal, you never really knew where that weed was coming from. This actually helped me open up my social horizons. It could have been from somebody white, Hispanic, Asian, Indian, man, even gay. This actually um, helped me break down a lot of the barriers that kept me from really connecting with people before that. This was the beginning of my personal transformation. The first time that I realized that cannabis was helping my life and pushing me towards a better place. Unfortunately, one of the uh, gifts I left college football with was an opioid addiction. Senior year of college, I went to my team doctor with a sore throat. She gave me unlimited refills of Vicodin. Months later, Vicodin graduated to Norco when I got seriously injured training for the league. I fell into deep depression. They gave me Zoloft. With all these drugs in my body, I couldn't sleep, man. Ambien. I soon fell off my school's insurance and I couldn't get a job. Only way I knew how to support that habit, selling weed. I posted up outside a Chicago pub that I bounced at in an alley behind Wrigley Field and sold to whoever had $20 on them. Somehow I ended up being scouted for one of the coolest jobs in the world. I was the MC for backstage pass contests for some of the biggest pop stars in the world. Some of them are still household names to this day. I was beyond happy. Back home in Fluvanna, mom hated it. Why don't you use your degree to become a banker or a lawyer or something? In between tours, I ran into my best friend from college. He was in corporate finance now, something I could never see myself doing. But he was making over 300,000, not getting hit by giant men at full speed. <laughs> it was crazy. His firm even offered me a job. I took it. I sold out. That damn mask caught up to me again. I hated every second of that damn finance job. <laughs> Thanks to my Cadillac healthcare plan, I was able to hide my addiction. $40 in copays was a much easier pill to swallow than $800 on the streets. Even if it was $800, I could afford it now. I was rich to me. <laughs> Three years later, my girlfriend at the time, she convinced me to reach out and try to find out who my biological father was. 20 minutes of online search, I found he died in November 1997. The same month, I told my mom I was all right. I called her up. And I told her what I found. She was speechless for once. 
continued to wear that mask and did better than ever at work. I won award after award, led sales teams nationally, but behind that mask, I was a wreck. I drank heavily, popped more pills than ever before. I burned through all my money with cars, lavish trips, just to impress whoever would listen or would scroll through my Facebook timeline. I did whatever it took to get people to accept me. <laughs> Eventually, that job that I totally loved took me out to California. I was able to learn the benefits of medical cannabis. A friend of mine owned a dispensary, and he taught me how to swap out some of those opioids for different strains with different ailments. At the time, I didn't really know the science behind the plant, but uh, about seven months later, I didn't need those pills. Could this have been the second time that weed had changed my life for the better? It was. Fast forward to year 10 in finance. I'm married now but I still hid behind that mask. I drank heavily. I had adult acne. I struggled with weight issues. That mask was winning. That's when the tumor appeared. My father died of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I thought I was next. I didn't want to die. <laughs> but I thought that I'd thrown away every damn gift that God had given me. I was almost ready to give up and at peace with it. But then the biopsy results came back negative. I was given another chance. It was time for the masks to go, for good this time. I went to marriage therapy and renewed my commitment to my wife. I decided to dedicate myself to exercise and eating somewhat healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I quit the job in finance and uh, started a new career in cannabis, something that had been a dream of mine for years now since the legalization push began back in Colorado. My first two years in that industry, a little rough. But I met every struggle with a giant smile on my face and more confidence than I had any business having. Year three, that was the breakthrough. I conquered sales for my new job, amassing 41% market penetration in a state we had zero prior presence. This led to our public listing and my own first successful exit after two and a half years with them. I started an organization dedicated to helping black and brown operators join the industry and get their records expunged. I dedicated myself also to helping the marginalized minorities and small business owners find their voice when they had no other time to, or, or platform to work with. I launched two successful cannabis-related businesses, now thriving in three states, and a monthly investor series here in Los Angeles, with over 200 people coming out month to month. I did all of this while keeping my vow to never end up in the same mental or emotional state that I was in before. I left the masks behind, and I built a strong reputation based on authenticity and following through on my word. This was my rebirth. My thoughts and actions were now all intentional. My dreams were beginning to materialize, and you know what's crazy? This is only phase one. I'm just getting started. <laughs> this was the third time the cannabis saved my life. You see, it's never been about being from a small town for me. It's always been about fitting into the skin. I didn't have the courage to face who I was in my past because I was never confident in who I'd become in my present. Things are different now. I think I reach back out to my people out in Fluvan and teach them the benefits of plant medicine, the blessings of cannabis, both recreationally and medicinally. Most importantly, how to process that past and progress into the best selves. If your painful past is holding you back, there's three ways you can deal with it. One, 
block it out, run from it, put on your mask and never speak of it again. Move forward as if it never even happened. Two, dwell on it. Let it forever torture you. Use it as an excuse not to move forward. Put on that mask because it is your new identity. This way you never have to face the truth and you can look at it as to why things are going wrong presently and they will stay the same, I promise you that. You see, I invite you to choose option number three, the path that I took. Have the courage to rip the bandages off your wounds. You see, cannabis, it helped me take off my masks. Find whatever you need in life to take off yours. You need to realize that the past only exists in your memory. What's already happened will forever be just that, a memory. Acknowledge, learn, and grow from it. Always strive to become a better version of yourself. Because you see, the world, it doesn't need your mask. You know what the world needs? The real you. Thank you. How many people have you saved with, with the, you know, helping people invest or get oh, investment oh, oh, for shit. their companies oh, okay. in every way that you're helping uplift their dreams? I've gotten 12 companies funded in the last six months through my investor series that I have in um, Los Angeles. 493 records we got expunged last year um, with my foundation. Uh, let's give a round of applause for that. <laughs> I told you he's achieved a lot right before I introduced him.